What's up, y'all? Back here with a new damn video. Let's get right down to it. Now, usually, you know, I'm here with the webcam, so you see the room more, see the shirts, whatever I'm wearing, whatever, whatever. But right now, I'm just using my my new cell phone. I got the iPhone 10 the other day, and I thought, hey, this is a really good camera, you know, and I was gonna actually record a video at work today, but you know, I didn't know how to, you know, do the editing or what, you know, the, the thumbnails and stuff on them at work. So I said, you know what, wait till I get home. Let's just get right down to it though. Free agency, the Eagles. I love it. I love it so far. Now, I was going to come here once Michael Bennett got traded. I've been really busy with work. I've been really busy with life and just so many things just been going on. Don't think I forgot about you guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. I'm always here. And like I said, if I ain't on here, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at IamCarlo609. It'll be in the description. Go check it out. Instagram, that's almost, almost the same thing as Carlo609. Snapchat, whatever. You ever want to text me, whatever, anything, talk to me. I'm here. Get my opinion. So if I'm not on here, you can get me on there. But let's get right down to it. Michael Bennett got uh, traded right away. I felt, uh, I don't know, we should have got rid of him. I think he was the second best defensive lineman or maybe the third, fourth best defensive player we had all last season. Uh, he might have been number one best defensive lineman we had last year. Now, Fletcher Cox is, of course, number one. But in, who, in terms of stats, in terms of effectiveness, and I was like, damn, why did we just get rid of him? But then he goes on Good Morning Football and says, hey, you know what? I want to pay raise whatever team it is I'm going to. Right away, how he's like, you know, this guy is 35. We just brought him in after one season. Next year, he's getting paid seven-something mil this year. Next year, it's going to be nine or eight, whatever it was. You know, let's bounce one, dude. And uh, you know what? You get a couple picks for him. And basically, those picks, not those picks, but equivalently, we kind of trade for Deshaun Jackson for, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. But let's get to the first one. Malik Jackson, we bring him in. Malik Jackson is a stud, Okay. We lost Timmy Jernigan. I said, damn, we lost Timmy Jernigan. Why, why did we pick up his option? You know, he helped us win the Super Bowl. He was part of that line. We want to repeat. Let's keep this thing going. But you know what? He had a lot of issues last year with the injuries, and plus his back was really messed up. And some people were even speculating he might never play football again. That's how bad it was. And I was like, wow, when you speculate someone might not play football again, is it even worth, you know, re-signing this guy, you know? Now, if he would have stayed healthy last year, all last year, had not, not no back problems like he did on the Super Bowl run, he definitely would, would have been re-signed, and we wouldn't even have picked up any free agents so far because we didn't have the money. But we started out, I think, dude, we started out in the red with the cap. I mean, we were like seven, only $7 million cap or less or whatever we were at, and I don't know where how he made it to $25, 24000000 million. That's how I rose him for you. The guy's a genius with the money. He's a wizard with it. And we didn't have to give up any players. Yeah, we traded Michael Bennett, but that's it. Timmy Jernigan, we let him walk. We didn't give him his option. I understand that. Um, Lane Johnson, we just had him restructure his contract. Now, Jason Peters just signed a one-year extension with the Eagles. So you re-sign Lane Johnson. You pick up Malik Jackson, who's a top lineman in the league for three years, 10 mil a year. He probably performs this year. If he underperforms next year, you could trade him, get rid of him, whatever. I don't know what the, the situation was that is with that. But with those three years, I expect him to be here for three years, okay? Uh, Deshaun Jackson, let's get right down to him. He gets traded here. Now, at the deadline last year, when they were talking about he was like not, didn't want Winston as his quarterback with TB Buccaneers, I was like, you know what? Let's get him in here. We need a deep threat for, for Carson Wentz, Bailey, or for Nick Foles, who was playing quarterback. We need a deep threat, a guy who's going to stretch the field, who's going to take the corner and the safety with him and make the defense play honest like defense does not know what's going to happen defense is going to be okay you know what we're going to have to drop back and not put all men in the box and we're not going to, we know he's going to throw to earths no now you have to rely on that speed and you know now at djack's age he's 32 or 31 i can't remember exact age a lot of people are going to say oh well he you know he, he ain't the same i'm not looking for i'm definitely looking for a production from him a couple you know course touchdowns and not a thousand yards, but at least six hundred, like around that area. You have Alshon Jeffrey, who's your number one receiver. Don't don't get it twisted. But what I'm getting at is this: from him, if I was Doug Peterson, if I was a coach, I would say, hey, you know what? The guy's thirty-two, but he still has like the fastest speed in the league. Well, Tyreek Hill's the fastest, but he's right next to him. You know what? Let's we'll just have him just go deep every route. It keeps the defense honest because you know what happens, right? Every if he runs a every time on a passing on a passing. You know, on a passing down or a passing play, and you have him go deep, but you have Earth running a slant, and you have Alshon running a slant, or Alshon just running the hook, or Alshon running whatever, they're one-on-one, -on -one, 
and the defense is looking straight at Deshaun Jackson just going deep, it's going to take the corner and the safety with them. Now, there's going to be times where if you do it over and over and over and over again, where he's just going deep, just sprinting down the field, you know, juking a guy and sprinting, there's going to be times where the defense is going to say, you know what, we're not going to sit here and let our – we're not going to sit here – and play handcuffed all game long, and let our let our safety just be stuck with him all game. We need someone in the box when they run the ball, or do this, do that. And you know what's going to happen? Their safety's going to bail because defensive coordinators going to say, hey, look, there's no way he's running, he's running deep routes all game long. You know what? We'll just drop the safety back. And you know what happens? Boom, it's a touchdown. 70-yard bomb, 60-yard bomb, Deshaun Jackson. That's simple. Just do that. Even if he's got to be here as a decoy for his age. If he really wants to win championships and do things like that, that's what you do. And it's so smart because everyone in the league, every defensive corner fears this guy. And I think they fear him more than Tyreek Hill because Tyreek Hill, I really look at him as like a really a special teams player who is really good at receiver. But Deshaun Jackson's always been the guy where it's like, you got to double team him. You got to really like put the, you know, when he goes deep, when he goes deep, post routes, this and that, this and that. Or, you you know, but he he's going to feel like a glove in Doug Peterson's system. What Doug Peterson has done so far with certain players, and these guys don't even fit his system. I think Alshon, of course, fits, fits his system. Certain people, Zach Ertz, of course, because he always likes to utilize, utilize the tight end. But I think he likes to do gadget plays. And when I watch Andy Reid's Chiefs, and I see Tyreek Hill doing the gadget plays, like the sweeps or the pitches or this and that, I'm like, wow. Get, us, get him a speed guy. And look, he's, he did it last year and the year before with Nelson Aguilar. Now, Nelson Aguilar is fast. Don't get it wrong. But if Nelson Aguilar is not even close to the speed of a Tyreek Hill or Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Jackson is going to make this offense way more complicated for defensive coordinators. It's going to make it way more explosive than you guys think. It's not just his – and I always said he's a one-trick pony, and I stick by that. He's a one-trick pony. He can go deep. He has a lot of speed. He can catch a slant. If no one's on him, he'll, he'll take it to the house, or he'll take it six yards. or he'll, no, Sorry, he'll take it like 15 yards or whatever. But he, this – Doug Peterson run gadget plays – he could run certain things with him. He could run the sweeps. He could run the this. He could run the that. He could run this. Okay, and I, I like the move. It takes pressure off of uh, Alshon. Of course, Zach Gertz is uncoverable. You know what I'm saying? Not uncoverable, but you know what I'm saying? As you've seen last year, he's always, anytime he's one-on-one, -on -one, game over. First down, first down. Five yard pickup, three yard pickup, four yard pickup. People criticize, you know, Zach Gertz, of course, for not having that. Oh, he didn't break a tackle there, but he's catching balls. That's all that matters. You're a tight end. He's not a wide receiver. That's supposed to run a four four. He runs maybe a four six, whatever. But he's pretty fast. But whatever. Now you got Dallas Goddard. Now imagine putting Dallas Goddard on the field, who, in my opinion, is this is just as athletic and just as good as Zach Gertz, but faster or more athletic. Sorry. Okay. Then you add Ertz. You add Deshaun. You have Alshon. And you got Carson Wentz as a quarterback. My one, my number one pickup right now is listen. Le'Veon Bell's not coming here, okay, guys. All right, we don't have the money. Now I would love Le'Veon Bell, love him. But there's no way he's coming here. We don't have the cash. But with the cash we have left, Tevin Coleman is the guy that I go pick up. Seven point five million dollars is what what they're saying he's estimate a year. Seven and a half mil. That's it. For him, and I'm telling you right now, Tevin Coleman, you guys can say, oh, he's whatever, he's this and that. No, Tevin Coleman, okay, let me tell you right now. Tevin Coleman is something special. Tevin Coleman is a guy, all right, who, Tevin Coleman's a guy that he fits like a glove in Doug Peterson's offense. Now, Bell, of course, fits better, but he fits like a glove. Premier cast, uh, sorry, a pass catcher. Can run it th through through the tackles. He's good with sweeps. He's good with options. He's good with those things that Doug wants. And I've seen him do a lot because I've seen it in Kansas City when he was calling plays. And he had a guy like Jamal Charles. Or he had a guy like, uh, you know, when Andy was here, he had a guy like Brian Westbrook. Or when he was in Kansas City, he had Kareem Hunt. You get what I'm saying? Like these guys. That's why he drafted Small. Well, Small would do the same thing. That's why he undrafted, signed Corey Clement. People like that. But had a cowbell in Blunt. With Garrett Blunt, but what I'm getting at is this: he would be my guy. That's my. I've been on the Tevin Coleman train for a minute, and no one's really seen Tevin Coleman's talent. You know why they haven't seen his talent? Because they haven't seen his talent. Because he's been sitting behind Devontae Freeman, got getting a couple carries, getting a couple carries, but not really taking over the load. Now this year, Devontae Freeman got hurt, and you've seen kind of what Tevin Coleman can do with 153 carries, has 860 uh, was 800 plus yards. 860 plus yards, I think, whatever it is. Uh, I can't remember his total touchdowns and plus his catches. No one else puts in his catches, but he put total scrimmage yards. It's got to be almost at least a thousand. 
And uh, in this offense, with what, what they do, he feel like a glove. But there's so much more free agency to go. Right now, it's even it's tampering time. We already got all this news and all this stuff. Let's go, Birds. Anything can happen. Who do you guys like below? And comment below if you guys feel me on the whole Tevin Coleman thing. Because at first, I was like, I don't know. And then I was like, you know what? I like this guy, and I would love for him. That he fits his system well, perfectly. Passing out the – catching out the backfield. Can run between tackles, sweeps, everything. Let me know how you guys feel below. Comment below. Let's go, Birds. D. Sean's back. You know what? I'm about to hit up the damn thrift stores real quick. Get the D. Sean jerseys before they rise the prices back up. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. But uh, let's go, Birds. And uh, comment below on your thoughts. Jackson, D. Jax is back. Malik Jackson's here. I'm ready to roll. It's been really wild, really fun free agency so far. Into the rounds with the Raiders. It's just a whole bunch of stuff. Go Birds.